Hello, welcome to MapLine. Today we're going to be doing a webinar to demonstrate how mapping can be used in a social studies type environment, uh, specifically for some school students, uh, elementary school and high school students who are trying to understand their data, be able to visualize it, find correlations between different statistics and, and reports, and visualize that all on a map. So let's go ahead and jump in. When you log into MapLine, you're going to see a screen like this, and you can see I don't have any current maps. So the first thing we want to do is actually create a map. And then we're going to import our data or add our data to show on the map. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see the button that says New Map. I'll click that and ask for my map name. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and name this Social Studies Map. Okay, And there we go. Now our map is created. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and open it. I'll show you. It's, it looks similar to Google Map. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. Uh, if you get in close, you'll see you know roads appear and the cities and things like that. Uh, in the top right-hand corner, you can actually change the style of the map. The view right now is a very detailed. Uh, has a lot of cities, a lot of roads on it. You can clean it up a little bit by selecting one of these other styles that might be a little bit easier to visualize. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with this map. So uh, here I can see the world. What I want to do is actually put in a spreadsheet full of information or, or data that I have. So specifically, I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up this spreadsheet that I have. And notice this is just downloaded from the internet. It's a report um, from a government website that shows by country the expected years of schooling for children. So you have Norway here in 1980 they had about on average 13.1 years of schooling per student per child. 85, 13.2 and you can kind of see the trend increasing over time. And so what we're going to do is in MapLine we would like to add this data to MapLine. So to do that I just come over to my map and I click add spreadsheet data. And uh, now it asks me well what data would you like to show on your map? Now I haven't put any data into MapLine yet and so it doesn't show, give me any options here but it does give me a button that says new data set so I can add more data from a spreadsheet into MapLine. So let me click that and uh, for the name of it we're going to name it um, number of years of schooling by country. Okay. And then in the, we can name it whatever you want, and then in the big box, we'll go over to our spreadsheet, and I'm just going to copy all this data and paste it right in. Okay, so once I have that selected, I can come in and copy it, and then go back over to MapLine, and all I do is just paste it in this box right here. And it's, it's all going to appear, and press continue. So once it's done processing here, we are going to see our data set, and we'll be able to check it to show on our map. There we go, and here it is. So we have number of years of schooling by country. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and check that so that it's so that it'll appear on my map and click finish. And there it is. There's our map. Um, so you see each country has a pin in, inside of it, and if I click on the pin, it'll show me all the data from my spreadsheet. So here's the United States, and it shows that in 1980 there were on average 14.1 years of schooling per student. And in 2013, we're at 16.5 years of schooling per student. Um, and so that's all your data, and it's, it's plotted on a map. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, there's a search bar. And the search bar, you can either enter an address, or you can start to type in uh, anything from your data set. So if I type in United, starting to type in United States, it'll give me an auto-suggest down here of all these pins that match the, the search term that I'm looking for. So I'll come down and click United States, and that should zoom me right into United States. And obviously, if I click that pin, it'll it'll show my locations. So if I zoom out a bit, it'll you know pull me back out to the world view. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing to understand is the search bar. Next is the share box. If I've built this map, and if I'm thinking, wow, this is a pretty cool map, I'd like to share it with somebody, with a student, with a, another teacher, with a coworker, whatever it is. I can come in here and click share and it's really simple I just enter the email address or multiple email addresses of the people that I'd like to share the map with and then click the share button and it'll send them an email with a link to the map and then they can log into MapLine and see your map that you created in their account so it's really easy to share the map with other people um, 
And then if I uh, come over here on the left hand side, you'll see that I can show and hide the different layers. The pin is really easy to change. Let's say we'd like to change it to be a circle and make it you know, a dark blue color. You can just select it here and click Save, and, and that'll change the pin on your map. Next is the label. So if I zoom into a, an area and I say, OK, this is interesting, but I want to really easily see which each of these locations are on my map. Well, I can come over here and I can click this Label button and it'll show the, the labels on my map, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil. So whatever is, is, is the name of each of my pins, that's what will appear in the label. So I can see it like that. The filter allows you to filter the visible locations on your map, and I'll let you kind of play around with that. That should be pretty self-explanatory. Now, let's move on. Let's make this exciting. So this is, this is really cool. We were able to, plan a lot, to uh, plot a lot of locations on the map, but... It doesn't really tell us a whole lot, right? I mean, if I want to see what are the high, the, the countries with a, a high number of years of schooling on average, what, um, how do I do that? I'd have to go in and click on every single pin and scroll down and see what the, you know, what the results are. And that's, that's not very realistic. So let's see if we can actually take this data and make it more useful for us, okay? And in order to do that, we're going to use something that's called a territory overlay feature. That Mapline has. So, to, in order to overlay a territory, essentially what I want to do is rather than having all these pins on the map, let's overlay each country as like a territory boundary on the map. And then let's color each country according to the number of years of schooling. So, countries with a high number of years of schooling would be red, and countries with a low number of years of schooling would be green or something like that. Okay? So, let's show how we can do that. So, I come over here and on the left hand side, on the map, underneath the zoom um, buttons, there is a little icon that says click territory layer to the map. So I'll click that, and here's my territory overlay box. The first thing I need to do is select the type of territories I like to overlay on my map. So there are Africa counties, Brazil cities, um, some Chile provinces. You can see a lot of U.S. maps, U.S. counties, U.S. zip codes, U.S. states. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see world countries. And that's what we're going to use for this map, because we want to see world countries on this map. Next, I need to name this territory set. So the name that appears here is just what's going to appear on the left-hand sidebar um, as the name of, of, this, of, these, of this overlay. Okay, So we're, we're essentially layering on an overlay on, onto our map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this um, number of years of schooling by country. Okay, overlay. Perfect. And then the next option is if I'm going to overlay world countries on my map, the, the final thing I need to tell it is how do I want to color each country? And in order to do that, I can, I can just select this drop down and you can see I can choose random colors so that each country is a random color. I can do solid colors so everything's gray or white or green or something like that. Or I can even download a, an, an Excel spreadsheet template and uh, type in the different colors for each country. And then I just copy that, paste it in, and, and it, it assigns each country to whatever color I had designated in my Excel sheet. What we want to do is something actually a little, a little cooler, is the, uh, the heat map option. Okay, So if I select the heat map option, what this means is that we're going to calculate the color of each country based on the, the pins that are inside of that country. Okay, So for example, Let's say I'm plotting customers on a map, and I would like, and let's say I have customers around the world, and I would like to show which countries have a lot of customers. Well, I can use this heat map option, and in the countries that have a lot of pins on it, I can make them red, or countries with few pins, I can make them green. Or I could do it with sales numbers, so the, the collective sales of all my customers in a country would um, be used in the calculation. Or, in this case, since there's only one pin per country, we're going to assign it to use the number of years of schooling for that country. And I'll show you how to do that. So select Heat Map Location Set and press Continue. And then in the data set type, um, or in the data set, we need to select our data set, the, the spreadsheet we uploaded. And here it is, the number of years of schooling by country. That's the spreadsheet we uploaded, or we pasted in. And the type, now we need to say, okay, what would you like to do? Would you like to base this on the number of locations in each country? No, that's not what we want to do. Uh, would we like to base it on the total of the years of schooling? 
or we can also base it on the average of the years of schooling. Okay, so let's do total years of schooling. The, the average in total, since there's only one pin per country, it's going to give us the same number, um, but you can play around with that a little bit later. The next option here is I'm going to select this and say map by percentile because what this means is that I only want four colors to appear on my map. You know, I don't, I don't want a, a hundred different versions of red and orange and yellow and green. I just want red, orange, yellow, green, and that's all. Okay, and so I'll select map by percentile. I want four color groups, and each color group will have 25% of the data in it, and click finish. Okay, so I know that that was kind of going over a lot of details, but um, let's see what this looks like, and, and it'll make sense really quick here. So once I click finish, it will go ahead and, and refresh my map, and if we've done this right, there we go. It is going to show each country with... Um, with the, with the colors on it. So let me hide the pins so we can just look at the countries here. And here you can see each country with the number of years schooling in it. So red means high and green means low. And it's really some interesting trends you see here, right? So you, you can see um, you know the layout by country and if you if you want to see the values you can just show the pins and click on it. So you see 2013 16.5 for the US. Uh, you know, if you come down to Brazil, they're an orange color and they were at 15.2. Um, and if you go to, say, India or, or any, some of these African countries, you'll see, you know, 11.7 years of schooling on average for India. Um, some of the African countries, maybe a bit less for this one, 7.4. Um, so anyway, you can see really easily the number of years of schooling distribution uh, as a heat map. Okay. Now, now that's really interesting, but let's go even a little bit deeper, okay? Um, here is, there's a super basic example of how you plot the data and how you can show it. And, and this might be where you want to start with, with schools or in a classroom. You might just want to stop here and say, yeah, build this kind of a map and then share it with your instructor. So the students would come in and they would type in the teacher's name to share the map with them. And then the teacher can see, you know, the map that each student built and, uh, and what their result was. But... If we want to be a little more sophisticated about this, let's see what else we can do, okay? Let's see how we can find some correlations between the number of years of schooling and maybe some other social um, or economic indicators. So if I go back to my spreadsheet here, you're going to see I have a second tab in here, which is the, the adolescent fertility rate, okay? Um, again, just another government report we pulled, and we thought, hey, let's see if there's any kind of a correlation between the number of years of schooling and, and the adolescent fertility rate and see if there's you know some interesting insights there that we can gain. So you'll see here in my column A, there's country, okay? And it just has each country in here. And uh, column B shows the year that it was done, and C is the adolescent fertility rate. Okay, now you're going to notice some of these columns probably need a little bit of cleanup, right? This was just a spreadsheet I, that was just downloaded off the internet, um, off, a, off a government website. Uh, some of the data, sometimes you want to just review it and, and clean it up a bit, which is always a good thing. But for the sake of this uh, webinar, let's just go ahead and paste it in, okay? So I'm going to go select the country, year, and adolescent fertility rate columns. And, select all of it and I'll copy that and now let's go back to MapLine and I need to add this data to MapLine so that I can then heat map it okay so the first thing I need to do is go to layers and notice here's my number of years of schooling let's add another spreadsheet which is the adolescent fertility rate okay and I'll paste that in, that data in that we already copied from the spreadsheet. And then I'll press continue. Okay, so now it is going to process all my uh, adolescent fertility rates by country. And it's going to put the pins on the map, just like what we had done in, in the previous example. Okay, and there we go. So here is adolescent fertility rate. So I'm going to put a check in that box so that it appears on this map and click finish. And now you can see I have two different data sets showing on my map. And so here you can see the blue pins are the number of years of schooling by country and the orange teardrop pins are adolescent fertility rates. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change this to circle and make it red. Okay, just so we can see the difference between the two. Okay, so there's my adolescent fertility rate. And if I click on a, on a country or something, it's going to show me, you know, all the information I pasted in from my spreadsheet. Okay, so you can see it really easily right there. Um, okay, so now 
Let's overlay the territories. Again, doing the same thing we did before. I'm going to go ahead and hide these pins so it's just a blank map. And I'm going to go in here and do a territory overlay, select world countries, just like I did before. And this time I'm going to name this Adolescent Fertility Rate by Country Overlay. Okay. And again, the heat map location set option. Uh, in the data set, I'm going to select, rather than the number of years of schooling, I'm going to select the adolescent fertility rate. And we don't want to do location density. We'd like to do some of the adolescent fertility rate. And again, I'll map it by percentile. Now, here's where I'm going to do something a little bit different. Okay. Here, I am actually going to do the inverse of our colors. Okay. So rather than red being high numbers and green being low numbers, I'm going to make this one so that green is high numbers and red is low numbers. Okay. Um, and, and so this is what this is do doing is if there is a correlation between the number of years of schooling and the adolescent fertility rate, then these colors are going to kind of match because the, the, the higher the number of years of schooling, if there is a correlation, then we're going to see that as number of years of schooling increases, the adolescent fertility rate decreases. Okay, and now once this is done, it's going to refresh my map. And now I'm looking at a map of the adolescent fertility rate by country. Okay, so again, this is the opposite. So the red means it's a low adolescent fertility rate by country, and the green means it's a high adolescent fertility rate for those countries. Okay, so I'm going to show the number of years of schooling. And isn't that interesting that you see a lot of the same trend in the coloring of these two different data sets? Okay, so you see an orange and yellow over in in China and in areas, and it's you know follows an interesting correlation here. Um, United States and Canada, you're going to see Canada is red on on fertility rate, and it is orange on the number of years of schooling. And then over here in some of these South American or, or African countries, you'll see those follow a lot of the same trends. So something that would be great in a classroom setting to be able to have students look at and find what kinds of correlations are there and what other kinds of data sets are there that they can um, look into. So this, this gives you a quick example of how to use MapLine in a social studies type environment and the different um, levers you can pull to see correlations or even just visualize data on a map and, and get people to start thinking about uh, recognizing geographic patterns and trends. So hopefully this has been useful and you've been able to see just some basic examples of how to use this and good luck with your social studies and your mapping.